Good now. Yep, I started. We're live. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, so how are you? And I'm good night. How are you? Yeah. So nice to so nice to see you. And um, sorry for the small little delay. And uh, I would like to also apologize from our um, subscribers for the small little delay. Um, yeah, this is going. This is a little awkward. It's the first time that we're doing this. Um, it's the first time that I'm doing something like this. So um, if I fail in some ways, please um, embrace me. Embrace the way how I fail. Um, all right. So um, this is the welcome to the seventh Istat Mono event, everyone. I'm Onur Yazajigil, and I will be. Um, hosting along with my co-organizer friends, uh, Murat Arsoy and Emre Parlak. We are a, a team of three people at ISTYPE organizing conferences, lectures, um, workshops, and also this single series, single talk. Um, last uh, talk was uh, delivered by uh, Alejandro Lochelso of Pampa Type from Argentina. And um, it was so nice to have him in physically. He got to deliver his talk and, and, and shared his experience. Uh, we, that's precisely what we had planned for, um, uh, for, for tonight's event, to have Philip with us physically in Istanbul. In fact, we did actually go ahead and buy his airline ticket and the hotel was reserved. And he even, I, I, I believe he, he was ready to even have his, um, his lecture was also prepared. Everything was pretty much all set. But then obviously, and needless to say, the pandemic broke out. So we had to cancel everything. So that's why this is the first time that we're doing this. And um, I would like to, again, extend my uh, 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 gratitude to you, Philip, because you, um, agreed to come live instead of like coming here physically, so which is a bumming thing. So thank you for coming again and being with us tonight. Um, so I'm going to now go ahead and um, uh, leave the microphone to you and, and have you run the show and, and share what you have in mind. It could obviously uh, very well be about your experience in ballet or your bedroom decor could be quite interesting. Um, yeah, very, very minimalistic. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, so I'm going to leave you, um, have you run the show, and um, thank you for being with us again. Okay, so how do I actually switch this again? Right, sorry. This is obviously okay. You can share your screen. Okay, does it work? Do you see black? Um, yes. Ah, perfect. All perfect now. So now it works. Okay, so uh, well. First of all, uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, I'm, I'm very sad that I didn't make it to Istanbul like initially planned, but yeah, so here we are. But nevertheless, uh, welcome to my talk, Over Amplifying, Over Connecting. Uh, I can wholeheartedly say that this is the best talk you will have ever seen. I can say that because I have gone through it once, I think, and it's not as bad as expected. So I think tonight I just uh, talk about my favorite topic uh, and complain about all those things that annoy me, things that cross my path at work. Just be that angry white cis male that I am, I guess, and probably also some type stuff. So yeah. I'm Philip, I work as a type designer. Uh, I put a type on the internet under the name of Rudiger. 
And they are also selling it at some places, like future funds. I also almost did 2,000 push-ups last month, but uh, I don't want to brag. So I conceive type in different ways, uh, sometimes through sketching for a specific purpose, sometimes out of boredom. I get inspired by type of finding books, specimens, or pretty much everyday life. I do type for money. I do type for relatives. I do type for awesome products by awesome people. Those products don't look just they just don't just look awesome, but they also sound amazing. I had all of my friends and colleagues in Copenhagen at Playtype with extending and uh, with extending character sets and refining and finalizing type. I can also make icons for sexual preferences of food or both. I sometimes make logos, uh, variable if if needed. I have been repeatedly told that I have an at least problematic affection towards condensed designs, whatever that may mean. Um, yeah, that, that, that takes a bit. <clears throat> I like doing arrows in all kinds of different ways and I try to figure out easy ways of how to make them not just writable, but also adjustable. Unfortunately, I have not seen them used often or, well, not at all, rather. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because they're too complex or people just don't care about arrows. I really hope that they do care about arrows, because I do. I will sleep over very important details. I sometimes doodle around manually with all kinds of different tools. I sometimes have fun at work. Sometimes I don't. And I think process is very important which is actually what this talk will be about. The following 45 minutes, minutes, which will feel like three hours, will be about the process of a type project of mine. Uh, the process was and still is everything but linear, and so will be this talk, chaotic, or let's say uh, lifelike or authentic. It all started in early 2016, with a project for which I collected some of my capital R's and I drew a few more to complete the set of 26. Out of these bunch, my friend and colleague, Louise Olivier, pointed this one out and suggested to make typeface out of it. I'm not sure why, but it did. Uh, I started with uppercase and didn't think about lowercase for that moment, at least. Early drafts of it were called after this friend of, friend of mine. Uh, I changed the name later on since my parents taught me to not show any kind of affection in public. I named it Norbert. The idea was to make it a bit rough and a bit erratic. I didn't sketch much for this one, but every now and then a bit here and there. The first version was a bit all over the place, but that's what I actually tried to do, not to make it too clean. I thought it could be super edgy with all kinds of different details and just this one design on purpose. I changed my lowercase g dramatically after I've seen a beautiful one in the Neon Letter Museum in Warsaw, which is also a reminder to actually take pictures of the things I like. I went on to make it a bit more even, but of course not too much. I still want it to be edgy, right? My main inspirations are grotesques from old specimens, like, for example, Venus, where I probably saw the small top part of P and R for the first time, or Doric with this beautiful G without a horizontal bar, but also all kinds of other grotesques I came across on the internet. Later that year, I visited St. Petersburg, where I found these, be these beauties. 
I was not so much in awe with the squarishness of the letters, but these little tales on R and G were just gorgeous. Since my R already had this kind of a tail, that C, that G seemed related. So I drew an accompanying light style. It actually got a little bit wider, inspired by the type on the building. I didn't mind the differences in the design. I didn't seek absolution in interpolation. I liked the idea of just somehow related styles. And since I already left my comfort zone, I draw an even wider style in a weight in between those two. So I had these three somehow different styles. I like the idea of bringing the extremes together with the style in the middle, but also contradicting that logic with its unrelated width. So some of the softness of the light style can be found in the middle style, while it also features some of the harder details of the heavier style. And since that was not enough, apparently, I tried to come up with something even heavier and wider than my initial style. I experimented with a couple of letters with a heavy set locus G, but I really dislike the way distribution of it. The thing is, you can make your type probably unlimitedly wide and fat in the horizontal direction, but you are limited by your X side, the vertical direction. There's only so much room. And as soon as you need multiple horizontals to make a letter readable, like for the G, for example, you end up with this. For a brief moment there, I thought about make it variable, since back then that was the new thing. I interpolation, I guess. Anyway, I caved and made the type a little bit lighter and in my mind nicer, but I'm sure taste is objective. No, subjective. Doesn't matter. To get structure into my life, I finally thought about a family plan. A plan for what styles I wanted to have in the context of this design. It was not necessarily filled with members that make sense in family context, but more uh, styles that I was interested in drawing with similar features. So some would be wide, some condensed, some light, and some heavy. I started to make a condensed style. I tried different designs for the more important letters. <clears throat> Get the mess here. There are some more important letters. I tried to avoid straight parts in the vertical rounds, which are often done in that narrow design. But I wasn't much in awe and postponed further process. I went back to the original style. It was quite different from the other ones, so I tried to align with, that, with those others a bit more, and even these really super edgy, cool, dope, and woke details had to pass for a more logical approach. And since I'm a man in need of constant harmony, many inconsistency made room for a more consistent design. And with time, it got uh, some. Every now and then, when I wasn't sure about certain details, I sketched a bit, but mostly smaller details. And I came back to the condensed design. I did end up with straight paths in the vertical rounds, and I was okay with it. I also changed the lengths of the ascenders and descenders several times, just before I started the heavy condensed. It was actually fun to draw, like carving away the black from a white block. And since I'm an addict, they just tasted the beautiful feeling of the hit. I started with a light condensed as well, even though it was not part of my family plan. I tested various weights, changed details, to end up with something of a similar gray value than the white light style. Having drawn all of these different styles, I, I noticed at some point a difference in the design of this spur on the end, for example. I, I didn't care that much. 
I, I thought it was interesting to have different ones, but I actually like the one in the Fed comments the most at some point. So I adjusted the other styles accordingly. So I had these seven styles and just my initial style was featuring a different GE design. It felt pretty arbitrary. So again, I caved and aligned it with the rest. Only before I actually got rid of the whole thing. I mean, yeah, it was a style that started the whole thing, but well, it didn't matter anymore. And six is a way better number anyway, right? So after I gathered all these styles and made them look like they actually belong to one another, what's next? Accents. The limited numbers of languages that I'm able to speak pretty much cover none of the interesting ones. So I actually try to make an effort to get them right. Well, that could be actually the thing. Back in my days at Ted Media and The Hague, some of my professors did not like the time-consuming approach too much. Well, I mean, it's understandable since their god was not a good reference for them. Well, it might have been because I did not put enough time into bigger problems. I didn't fix why playing around with accents. Anywho, there are smart books and websites that will tell you everything you need to know about accents, like this one from Adam Schwaller. He doesn't even shy away from telling you what angle your acute needs to have. And since type designer really love to be told exactly how to design certain letters, they of course follow suit. Well, I mean, um, it's really interesting to visit places for me for with for me foreign accents and see them in the natural habitat, since reality seems to paint a different picture than some of those fancy helpers. A way more interesting one, to be honest. So what happened? Don't tell me they don't know the rules. I mean, they are rules. The thing is, I'm not a native and I don't speak Polish and yet I know what this letter is supposed to be in this specific context. There is no other letter or diacritic in this language that has an E with something dangling from its right border. I think it's all a matter of context, what of the context uh, that these accents are put into. And of course, it's a matter of habit. You repeat what you see, what you've been told or taught. And there's always personal preference, of course. Like I've been taught to not let my locus accent extend the ascender height or to center the locus accents vertically while the uppercase accent can be more drawn to the latter. And not rarely do uppercase accents have a more shallow angle than lowercase accents because it makes sense to make them not too high to save an unnecessary amount of lighting. But sometimes I like to design my uppercase accents in a completely different way. And sometimes I like to make them as steep as the lowercase ones. Why? Because I think it looks nice. Regarding to Adam Schwader, that makes me really Polish, or rather, uh, I confuse the acute with the Kreska. But when I look at the uh, old prints from the French printer Claude Garmon, for example, I can find very steep accents as well. And since my friend and colleague Jean Milon told me recently that accents coming from the middle is a very French thing, I finally feel like I belong. Okay, but seriously, look at how good that looks. Okay, flat ones are nice as well. Yeah, I give you that. Also, why not melting the accents with the letters? It can be nice. Yes, of course, that opens up into a completely new array of problems, but isn't that fun to solve? As naive as I am, I would like to think that the designer should decide what the accents look like, probably according to the design of the letters, as long as they are readable for what they're supposed to be. 
So sometimes they're steep, sometimes flat, sometimes something in between. They should fit the type, whatever that may mean to the designer. Okay, where was it? Accent, right. One of my very first thought was something excessive and unproportionately big. Since it's a display typeface, why not go for it? Okay, but because of reasoning, I stepped it back a few notches and went with something more uh, integrated. Most of the styles got steeper accents in the process, mainly out of personal preference. And since this project is burning a big hole in my pocket for way too long, I started to broaden my sphere of influence. I got into the Cyrillic alphabet some time ago, and I was fortunate enough to travel to Moscow and St. Petersburg a couple of times and be surrounded by Cyrillic letters for at least a couple of days. The Cyrillic alphabet shares a couple of letters with the Latin, but also throws in something different to the mix. But what's also actually interesting about it is that it has geographical preferences. What you see here is the Russian lowercase version of the Cyrillic alphabet. The Bulgarian language uses alternative forms for the same letters, as well as the Serbian. The different shapes of the Serbian and Bulgarian Cyrillic are due to further development by hand before they started to print the type other than in Russia. If these alternatives are necessary or not, might maybe be debatable, but I mean, yeah, what do I know? I'm not a native. Another thing that I struggled with shape-wise was the Cyrillic K. I've been told by a Cyrillic native that it doesn't need to have a different form than in Latin, which can often be seen in typefaces. The thing is, there's this other letter as well, the J. I'm not pronouncing it properly, I'm trying. I, I have this thing with my tongue, you know? Anyway, when you have a K like this, it makes sense to build your J like this. I have been told, though, that it's a very uncommon form, or that this is a very uncommon form. Also, I would run into major problems with that form in my condensed notes. But also, I have this Latin R, and there's this really ya. Yeah. And somehow I feel that these three Cyrillic, the Cyrillic letters are related. So what to do? Should they all have straight legs with a letter K? Should it be different K with uh, all straight legs, but a more common J construction? Should the Ya be more like the Latin R? Should maybe be K, J, and Ya all be curvy? Now I'm starting to wonder if my Latin K might be wrong. Maybe nothing else really matters. But all cluelessness aside, I asked professional con to consult me on my design, like Maria Dorioli, Daria Petrova, as well as Ilya Ruderman. I ended up with something that will hopefully make sense to natives and is somehow decent and surprisingly interesting. My Cyrillic character set does not support all Cyrillic-based languages, but uh, all of the big ones, I think. For everybody's toes I've just stepped on, I'm sorry. Please call me if you need something. I did not just change the Cyrillic letters, but my Latin ones as well. The wider ones, the wider styles got a way less squarish in the process. And the heavy one got even less contrast. I tucked in the ears of my jeans, and the content, uh, the content styles got more defined counter shapes. They felt rather undecided before. As well as as well as uh, all the white S forms, they needed more uh, sturdiness. I put in extra points with the straight spine to get more control of the curve. So now I have this, uh, this different styles from light condensed to uh, heavy white each style. I cover Cyrillic Latin with all these nice accents. So now you can use 
Now with all these <clears throat> lovely languages, what more to add? Italics, of course. But italics are uh, special, mainly because our deeply flawed eyes are tricking us. Our eyes perceive horizontals thicker than verticals, which leads to a change of weight on, on the way from a horizontal to a, right, from a vertical to a horizontal and from the horizontal to the vertical and so on, which results in a different weight distribution that already affects the diagonals of the uppercase A, for example. So then now when you slant the whole thing, uh, completely disregarding the still upright grid we keep working on in the font editor, we can see, or at least I hope, that the upper right of the O is significantly heavier than the upper left. Same goes for right and left of A. While A is uh, more easy to fix, the real fun happens in the round stuff. There you have the weight shifts that look different pretty much every day you look at it, which can be very demotivating. The problem about slanted curves is not just the somehow nerve-wracking weight shift, but also that they appear steeper than the straight stems. One of the ways to avoid the situation is to half slant and half rotate the round part, like the O in this example. That way, uh, the rounds roll much smoother and appear to have the same angle than the straight stems. Unfortunately, this leads to another problem the triangle tragedy. On each side, left and right, top and bottom, you will get uneven counter triangles for the situation. Or in between age, it might not matter. But the thing that haunts your dreams awaits you in the lower case. When you have all like PDBQ and you want to keep them in the italics, this is what will happen. Very unequal outer counters. I try to squeeze and drag the outlines of the round to make more equal appealing outer counters. Unfortunately, this leads to very strange and not O like inner counters at all. Again, I caved and kept working with the unequal outer counters. Welcome to the limitations of geometry. But I mean, does it matter? Do you see what I mean? Is it even recognizable or? Maybe I've been staring at my screen for too long. I don't know. I settle with this version. I don't like the differences in the outer counters, but I do like the old like rounds. And also the rotated feel that comes with the rotation. I especially like the rotated, rotated feel in S, for example. This is actually something that I have witnessed in old specimens as well. I suppose due to the lack of better ways that did some kind of rotation as well. I think it adds a nice flow to it. When it comes to grotesque typefaces, a slanted italic seems to be the way to go. But I grew to liking of giving the double story A and also G a more simplified shape. It makes it a bit more italic, but without being too fancy. My first approach was a mind-boggling 14 degree angle. I wanted to go for slanted and also back slanted version. But somehow in between the upright, it didn't stand out too much. It was much different in other ways as well. So, italics are not italics. We do, or maybe just me, uh, call everything italic that pretty much has an angle. There are differences though. For example, we have the slanted or also called blick version uh, for which the upright construction is just slanted. There's the italic italic that has a different construction already and it's usually a little bit more flowing. And there's also the cursive construction, which is pretty much done in one go. Italics can have different purposes. Like for example, they can point out but still integrate or be loud and outstanding. A change of construction from upright to italic makes it easy to accomplish those scenarios. I would say that for some typefaces, the possibilities of an italic counterpart seem almost endless. 
which can also lead to a never-ending search process. And even if you have found that one italic that fits perfectly to your upright, that construction might not work in other way, in a different way. It can happen that this will change your initial uh, attack design again. And why shouldn't it? It's all about process because that's good and progress and learning and changing and fun. But for Norbert, it felt inappropriate to do a different construction with a more humanistic and warm approach. So long story short, I just increased the angle, as well as making the rounds roll more. I think that way it stands out more, but still fits to the upright. Unfortunately, the formerly mentioned triangle tragedy brings further problems, for example, in kerning. But I'm working on them. It took me a long, long time to get to a point I finally was okay with these italics. I tried different ways. I paused the whole thing because I didn't agree with geometry. I blamed my inabilities to draw something I like, but I think I'm finally getting somewhere. That's good. Okay, I want to mention a few things regarding my figures. Uh, the default are proportional lining figures on cap height. Tabular versions are available as well, since I can only imagine that one wants to set tables in this typeface. I chose this design for the four to avoid a small, uh, to avoid a small counter and the clunk, clunked up mess on top. I might have started from laziness, but I actually grow to like it. There are also old style figures available. Again, proportional tabular, of course. The old style figures are a bit higher than the X side. That way they integrate in text, but still stand out as something different from the letters. Instead of going with a normal schema term of dragging the three down, like the four, five, seven, and nine, I actually left it on lining height. That is actually owed to the Koshan revival my former classmate Tetsu Suzuki did during time media. He has found a book set in Koshan with these strangely arranged old style figures that just look wrong to me as a rule abiding citizen. But it was so special to me that it was actually engraved into my brain. It took me a while, but at some point I just wanted to make use of this kind of thing in a project of mine. And here we are. This is also where I got the fl flat top construction from. Okay, admittedly, there are a whole bunch of other things going on in the cushion numerals, like the five that is not dragged down either, and all kinds of different heights, but yeah. I, I just had eyes for that three, I guess. So, in conclusion, for now, I have these six upright and six slanted styles. I am tackling the back slanted uh, counterparts as we speak and finalizing everything. Sure, the styles are not that different from another anymore that one could argue to make it interpolatable and get, get out of it uh, some ways in between. But yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be that difficult, but I don't really see it like that. I think these styles are more a collection of familiar sites, and not necessarily like a family. Maybe I wouldn't even recommend to use the different weights with one another. I personally like to work with one shade of gray. That's why I'm adding the back slander to the mix to have three different ways to design one gray, but that's only just me. To this day, I'm not a fan, I'm not, to this day, I'm not a, a VFW. I understand the advantages of it, but I don't believe in making everything variable just for the sake of it. Yes, a variable font with extremes on opposite sides of the spectrum could give you almost unlimited possibilities. But I do believe that there are many examples in this world that clearly show that unlimited freedom is not always a good thing. Like the great and powerful architect and jack of all trades, Charles Bellow said, 
limitations are not necessarily bad. They actually inspire creation. Sure, you can also make these super awesome animated little things with your letters that interpolate so visually pleasing from one extreme to another with these unusable things in between. But then again, it's not that complicated to do that. No one actually needs a very fun technology for it. Like me, for example, back in 2014, when I didn't know anything about type, but still managed to make this interpolatable A and animate it. So yes, what I'm saying is, valuable fonts are beneath me. I'm actually a real artist. And just like I contradicted myself already at least a dozen times since I started this talk, I'm a hypocrite. Of course I have products in my drawers that might be wearable, but then again, I am also full of shit. So Norbert's process is coming to an end and in early 2021, it will be released with my friends and colleagues over at Tape Typemates. Please feel free to be on the lookout. Otherwise, I would probably annoy you with it on social media anyway. Okay, one last thing I would like to mention tonight, uh, Future Fonts. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with it, Future Fonts is a fund distributing platform that sells funds in progress. It's a little bit like a crowdfunding. You give the type designers money to finish the work. Only that as soon as you get in, the keyword is for you. So you get an early access to an in progress typeface. And once you pay for the typeface, you will get the updates and hopefully finish the product at some day for free. By now it consists of around uh, 70 independent, mostly one person type founders from pretty much all over the world. Unfortunately, I was allowed to be part of it. And it's actually quite nice to be part of this international community of very skilled and warm people that help out one another behind the scenes. And of course, it's nice to see people using your type, giving you feedback, or articulating what they want the finished project to be and also already making a little bit of money with it, which is of course also a huge motivator. And now to give you a quick look of the future fonts richness, um, you can find expressive display styles that leaves you in awe. Beautiful, spiky, but also serious and a lot of crazy projects. And again, if you get in early, some of these are super cheap. But since this talk is my opportunity to shine, uh, I need to point out my projects because they are actually uh, <coughs> the <coughs> they are actually the, 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 the best ones on, on there. I can say that without having <coughs> any biases. So if you think you should support all of this heavy scientific research I'm doing, please feel free to do so. Um, check them out, get them, crit critique them, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and buy typefaces. And yeah, thank you for listening. Wish we could a bunch of people right now um, applauding, you know, in a, in a, in a nice lecture hall, but um, you can fantasize it. How do you Yeah, I do that in my mind all the time anyway. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, you wake up in the morning and everyone is like yeah, applauding in the morning. Voices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have... Um, Thank you for this very, very uh, informative talk. Um, it was, it's, it's very helpful for not only beginners, but also um, people who are already designing typefaces to sort of like reconsider certain steps um, and also instructors, how when they actually end up um, instructing their students, this, your, your talk was actually really, really um, so concise and very to the point and, and very inspiring for, uh, for, for um, a broad, uh, broad, broad spectrum of people. So thank you very much. Um, so, um, Philip, uh, we're gonna, I, I would like to have everyone 
to take a moment and, and think about if, they, if there are any questions that they would like to ask. Um, but I certainly have a question that I would okay. like to ask. Um, in, in the meantime, I can go ahead and I can ask while um, our guests can, can think about it if they have anything. So my question is, you are clearly interested in display typefaces. I mean, typefaces with a, 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 with very generous attitude. Um, and when it comes to generous attitude, display typefaces, they have a lot more room to play. There's more room to play, I suppose, when it compared to creating something um, for extensive or continuous uh, reading. Um, I was wondering if, if, if you ever um, practiced um, a text phase, and and if so, in the midst of it, um, what kind of like you know uh, uh, struggles did you have, and and what is that you you've learned from that experience? If you could summarize, uh, I have yeah. Uh, some of the serif types that I showed in the talk were actually mine, and uh, no, well everything, all the types were mine, but. Yeah, I, I, I did uh, also type that at least was meant to be for excessive text. And uh, yeah, I, I think when it comes to readability um, and also smaller sizes, of course, it's important to have, I don't know, more equal counter shapes and not too small forms. And uh, there's a whole bunch of, of details mm -hmm. that uh, I, I guess you don't need. I, I think as, as type designers, or maybe especially in the beginning, uh, or okay, I can only talk about, uh, I can only talk for myself, of course, but uh, when I started uh, also at Type Media, there was, uh, I, I just wanted to have uh, so many details, and, and I think there was no straight line in any of my types. I just I needed to have like everywhere, like some small details and I don't know, but in the end, this is all stuff or, or many of those things that you don't actually need because it will be small and yeah. I, I have to admit that I haven't worked on, on anything for extensive reading in a while. I should and I want, but uh, I still try to finish the other projects first, so. Cool, thank you. Also, I was curious about um, how you came up with the name. Maybe you did mention it, but somehow I, I think I must have skipped it. The name of Arnold, uh, Rudiger, Theodore. Uh, the names of, uh, I mean, if unless they're super personal that you would like to keep it for yourself. No, I think, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know, I have a fondness for all German male names. Uh, I have been also uh, told that maybe I should also have female names because it's uh, discriminating to not have female names, uh, which I, I have in my drawers. But uh, I I don't know. Some of the names were uh, are names that I stuck from I don't know. Uh, olden days or sometimes I, I just hear a name and I think it's, yeah that sounds just ridiculous and stupid I, I like it I mm -hmm. want it and Arnold is actually the name of uh, the last name of my sister now she married uh, someone with Arnold as the last name and the first time I heard it's like yeah that's that's awesome I need that name okay I see you say you pick your names sort of arbitrarily, right? When it comes to naming your fonts, your type, your type families? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I don't know, but I, I kind of think that names don't really matter. It's, um, it's uh, yeah. I, 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 I have listened really, with, with uh, sorry? I really appreciate it. I appreciated that stance and that attitude. And I was wondering actually if that sort of, maybe that, that attitude lets you focus on the forms perhaps even better because I've, I've, I've heard so many times from type designers and including myself too, where in the, in almost like, you know, towards the end of the product or, or the typeface, I mean, in the middle of the whole production, 
you start like spending even time like, oh, maybe it could be this name or this name. So maybe your stance actually kind of like uh, lets you focus on the form and completely get rid of the idea of whatever it's going to be. It could be gibberish, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's true. Uh, of course, it, it takes away uh, a pressure that it doesn't need to be connected to the design. Um, I mean, I understand when people want to connect it. And I personally, I, I don't like when, when people build like big stories about it or I don't know, it's like, and, or put it into a small box and everything is connected and it gets very tight. And I don't know it. I mean, I don't have a child, so I don't know how it works, but uh, I mean, when, when you, 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 you name your kids something and you don't know what it will be. It, it's hard to say, <laughs> yeah, well, this, this is a Kevin, but uh, I, don't, I don't think it works like that. And I mean, of course I have an idea what, what the type is, uh, is supposed to be, but as soon as it's out, I, I, I think every uh, graphic designer should do whatever with it anyway. So, and also it's just a name. Uh, it, yeah. it's, it's not that in the end, I don't know. Uh, when, I, when I was studying before Type Media in Kiel, uh, one of the professors uh, told me you should have a title with an, with an A in the name as the first letter. So I appear uh, on top of the lists. Or two okay, silly. But, uh, or, or, or Eric, Eric Spiekermann was rooting for, well, if you want something to adhere in figures. people's mind, it come, up with, come up with two syllables. Yeah, but I don't know. I I'm not sure if I if I want these people to use my typeface if if that's the way they actually chose uh, typeface. I mean, <laughs> no, that's that's no. I I really appreciate that. I was curious about it, and I for for me, it 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 kind of like you know goes along well with your liberated um, attitude, with your um, strokes and your your ink traps and your overall uh, counterforms. It goes, it goes well along with that attitude of your shape. So the, it, it's almost okay. a, it, it's a philosophical stance. Which I appreciated that. I was curious. Yeah, that's not smart. I like that. Um, all right, so do we have any, um, do we have any questions? So even anybody watching. Anyway, um, you, you can you can see people's reactions, I suppose, right? I don't, I don't know where. <laughs> oh, you can see them. Um, okay, so then uh, I'll share my screen. Then maybe you can see. Oh um, yeah. Can you see people's reactions? Now you can see them. And now I see many small. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, these are some reactions. Um, we have. Uh, we don't have a question so far. Um, but um, yeah. Uh, I said it all. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll go ahead and stop my screen. Um, Thank you so much again, Philip. Um, I think um, we can we can gradually end this session, and okay. um, we will be we will be putting your your video online for the ones who were not able to come and join. And then okay. thank you for taking the time to prepare the presentation and share it with us. Uh, we look forward to having you physically in in person in Istanbul. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> but but uh, also thank you for thank you for the invitation. Uh, it, was, it was well. It's always nice to be considered. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. It's, it was it was our pleasure. And again, I'm uh, speaking on behalf of uh, two of my good friends, Emre Parlak and Murat Aysot. And um, I would like to also say good night uh, to everyone, along to uh, along with Philip. Uh, have a good evening and enjoy the rest of your fun time. Good night. Bye-bye. Yes, you too. Bye. Bye.